Good afternoon and welcome to episode 742 and the topic today is when you fall in love with yourself everything changes and I think that's going to be pretty clear and I can just sign off now but I want to explain a bit more detail <laughs> give you some clues and tips and some guidance and some indications that might give you some clarity so before I do that let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day because this is an everyday thing uh, my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't already figured that out. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for Divine Feminine, which inspires these talks, and also why I do these talks every day, which I've done now for over two years. That's why I'm up to number 742. And the title of the overall, sorry, the, the, um, the name of these talks, overall, which overarching name, is Messages from the Masculine Inspiring the Feminine Heart, although quite a few talks like this one are not gender-specific or polarity-specific. This is for everybody. This is about love, self-love, self-support. So I want to talk about that um, mainly because I saw the movie Rocket Man yesterday, which reminded me of this. I've talked about this before in other talks over the last 700 broadcasts. And yesterday I did a talk about childhood stuff that was also in the movie but this one came up as a reminder and so this topic I'll tie into the movie so if you haven't seen the movie yet I'm just gonna let you know go see Rocket Man it's a great movie it's not like it's uh, Endgame where there's spoilers this is gonna be basically stuff about his life so I can talk about this I think safely but also something happened for me today that gave me some um, reminders so this is a bit personal as well so in simple terms again when you fall in love with yourself, when you fall in love with yourself, everything changes. Meaning that when you fall in love with yourself, your relationship to yourself and everything else will change. And here's how, and here's why, and there's some more to it. Um, simply put, most people don't love themselves. Let me be blunt about that. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. And if you don't, please watch. And if you do, please watch, because this can be valuable on both sides. But what I'm aware of is how people have some interesting patterns that they will exhibit, they will express, they will present that in some ways are very telling, almost telegraphing their lack of self-love because they're focused on trying to get love elsewhere. Now, referencing Rocket Man, and there are some very powerful um, dialogue lines in the movie that speak to this in some ways. There was actually a whole conversation in the movie about how Elton was being accused or being informed somewhere in between the two that he doesn't love himself which is why he's always doing what he's doing externally to try and fill himself up and i talked yesterday about that i think it was, i think it was yesterday about how filling us up externally i did yeah with addictions with the other people's needs and material things all these different things in search of love is the thing that doesn't work we as human beings are love and crave love and sometimes they don't go together which is really weird so let me explain that a bit more clear, clearly. And I come back to the movie as well. I'm, I'm, I'm dropping threads here, but I'll come back and tie it all together. We're born in, lo in a loving space in terms of when we're born as babies, we are automatically loving by default. There's no other um, way of describing it. But then life happens. And so we talked about this yesterday. We get imprinted and programmed and um, educated in a way with different experiences about love and that conditionalizes love for ourselves and other people then we spend over the rest of our lives the rest of our lives until we learn differently pursuing some other way of getting love based upon what we learned when we we're kids and i mentioned in the movie how we are or i should say in the movie how he came back to himself and discovered or should say remembered his younger self and made and came in to love him so they could be free again. That was kind of the journey of, in a way, the hero's journey, the, what, what, Elton John, what Elton John's character in the movie did was had a hero's journey coming back to himself. We all have that chance. Whatever level of challenge we have when we were younger, whatever level of challenge we've had when we are adults, we have the chance to come back to love. And I spoke about that a little bit yesterday about that reminder piece, and I'll mention some things in there from there today as well and offer about the experience of what you'll have when you get to the other side of this because I want to speak about how when you do fall in love with yourself how everything changes so let, me, let me do that first then I'll come back to the other part so when you fall in love with yourself and what I mean by that is not like romantically you fall in love with yourself and become a narcissist no it's not what I mean 
What I mean is when you start to really love who you are. I should say, when you remember to love who you are. When you are um, fully embracing your own... Um, I say it. Your own self-support, your own self-understanding, your own self-reliance. Then everything changes because what happens is you become um, committed to your own support. You become committed to your own understanding. You become committed to your own well-being. And this um, shift for some people is dramatic, and sometimes, it, and for some people, it's a complete paradigm. Um, sorry, I'm watching. <laughs> Excuse me one second. I'm watching a spider on a one. Need to stop. So I'll be right back. Do not disappear. <laughs> I know you're going. Where did he go? Sorry, I was. Um, watching a spider on the opposite wall that got my <laughs> that got my attention and I thought it was outside the window and it's inside the window I'm like oh I can't let that get into my clothes so I had to take immediate action so excuse me for that distraction for a moment <laughs> if I'm just saying it, just stay on the camera don't walk away let the spider go everyone's like no 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 I'm gonna get rid of it anyway um <laughs> getting back on track <laughs> excuse my disappearing out for a moment there when you fall in love with yourself and you remember who you really are your sense of resource that you have inside yourself is much more in, is increased dramatically you become so much more um, so I don't want to say resource oriented I'm trying to think of the right way of saying it you basically come to a place where your support of yourself is so strong you don't need anybody else to do that for you now if you're in a relationship I'm not saying you don't need don't love anybody else what I'm saying is though your need for love doesn't come from outside, it comes from inside. Which is, sorry, excuse me, it's fulfilled inside, not outside. That's what I'm trying to say. So when you do fall in love with yourself, an authentic way and an, an aligned way, you'll find that your needs from other people diminish. It means that, it, it literally means that all those hooks you may have on other people, or those needs to be fulfilled by alcohol or drugs, that need for the next car, the next pair of shoes, the next relationship, all that stuff goes away. Meaning, not, it doesn't go away, but the need for it goes away. Yes, you can have those things in your life. I'm not, I mean, because I'm a big fan of people having healthy relationships. I'm not saying you don't need a relationship. But what I am saying is that the love you have for yourself is such that the relationship you're in is a place you contribute to rather than feed on. And for some of you, you know when you've been in a relationship where you felt yourself be... Um, out of balance, out of and in place of need. Hi Mary, nice to see my broadcast. Oh, quick sidebar. This is a Facebook Live in case you're wondering who I'm talking to. So watch it on YouTube or somewhere else. I'm watching it, it was on Facebook Live first, so people are interacting with me here. And I'll give the links for that at the back end, by the way. So when you are really starting to understand that the love you have for yourself replaces those apparent needs for love outside. I'll use an analogy this way. Um, I'm trying to, I've been racking my brains for analogy, I'm not finding one. But what I was going to say was about Chinese food. Because one of these ideas is that, in fact, you know, they all story about Chinese food is like you have Chinese food and you're hungry two hours later. When you're seeking love, fulfillment, needs outside of yourself, it's like that. You fill up temporarily and then you're hungry again. When you learn how to love yourself and when you are falling in love with yourself, that goes away. It's like you're self sufficient, literally. Your love is self sufficient, which means that any relationship is bonus. Any relationship of any kind, loving, affectionate relationship, is this wonderful gift on top of the love you already have, which is a huge transformation for some people because many people out there think that they don't have their own love. They think, in fact, the only way they're going to get love is from somebody else. So they're always seeking, seeking out there for love that's not available the way that their own love is. And one of the reasons why they do that, as I mentioned yesterday, because their belief about themselves is diminished by something that happened to them when they were younger, so the thinking that their own love has any value is diminished, falsely so. When we love ourselves, everything changes. And transformationally, exactly, Mira, you're already whole. That's the thing, is most people forget that. Even though they may look in the mirror and go, yeah, they're whole, emotionally, energetically, psychically, mentally, I think I covered all those, feeling that you're not 
hole is driving you to find love outside, to be filled up, to be um, made okay. It's a temporary experience because it's not up to somebody else to make it do it for you. It's up to you to do it for yourself. Because when you do that, your relationship chain information happens. I mentioned yesterday how much about stamping out codependence. Part of that is that shift to really loving ourselves because, because the love for ourselves is the one resource that doesn't go away. Everything else changes. Internally, we stay the same. We stay connected. We stay sourced in our own love and that's the powerful place to be. It also transforms our way of reacting and responding to the world as well. I, referencing experience I had today because I was mentioning at the beginning about that. I had a conversation today with a couple of people about something that there was some things told to them about me that wasn't true. And it's not my first rodeo to experience something like that. But in the conversation, I really, they actually gave me feedback about this, is they were very surprised how I didn't react. First of all, I knew that what, they said, what was said about me was not true. And so the, the thing is that, the fact is that they weren't thankfully well, let me say another way. They were relaying to me what they'd heard. They were not telling me that they would, they were telling me what was true. They wanted to know from me. So first of all, that was respectful. So I'll take it that way. But secondly, I really got clear that what was happening was other people's judgments. Now, in the structure that I was talking about, there was a place where I know there was a risk that I might no longer be able to play in that environment. But I was not attached to it because the truth is I really do trust myself and I love myself in this context. And it's a place where I mean that I don't, feel, I don't take offense or feel uh, reactive or having to prove myself to what happened. And that shifted everything. The conversation was very light. It was very clean. There was a sense of relief from both the other people because they did thought I was going to become very active. And I'm like, you don't know me very well. But the truth was, really, you really want to get back down to nuts and bolts. It was my own self-support, my self-love that enabled me to navigate the conversation without any reactivity or minimal reactivity and no need to prove anything. So we know who I am. See, the proving ourselves to other people is almost a quest to get love as well. When we love who we are, there's nothing to prove. When we love who we are, there's nothing to get. Yes, it's fun to go out and play those things, but it's always from a place of overflow and, 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 and um, enjoyment versus, oh, I'll hate it if I don't get that goal. So goal achievement, getting things done, relationships, achieving certain things are much less necessary for fulfillment because you already are fulfilled. When you live in a place of love for yourself, when you care about who you are, when you appreciate those things in your life first, then those other things externally become add-ons, bonuses, gifts, celebrations of additions sort of thing. So relationships aren't codependent, they're interdependent. And the interdependence means that you are full and complete, same as your partner is, and what you bring to each other is additive to each other. So the relationship is greater than some of the parts, to use a Gestalt term. And the understanding means that your relationships are much more fulfilling, much more whole, and much more joyful, because you're no longer needing to get something from the other people. It's a really powerful place to be in love, on any level of relationship. It's good in business relationships too. When you are coming to a place where you're giving your gifts and sharing your bonuses, your bon bonuses, your um, talents in a way that is celebrating who you are, you're not trying to prove anything to anybody else. You're simply demonstrating to other people. And also, you're not in a place where you need to get something from other people. Yes, you're going to work in a job, you're getting paid, and uh, you want to hire you for your skills, but it's not from a place of need to get. It's a place of mutual exchange. Again, codependence into interdependence. So one of the biggest pieces about this understanding when you do learn to love yourself and fall in love with yourself is that the relationship with everything else changes from that codependent need take, have to have to get what you want to a place of interdependence where things out there you want that you don't have, but it's just like, it'd be great to have them. My life will not end because I don't have them. I won't be upset and hurt, really up, distressed if I don't get what I was wanting. It'd be nice to have them. It's a sense, it's a shift from, from need and, and grabbing and lack to a place of overflow, abundance, and joy. When you love yourself, everything changes. And again, referencing back to the movie, because I want to make sure I tie everything together, as I mentioned. So, experience I had today, yes, talks about that. Um, experience I had to, in the movie, one of the biggest journeys in that movie, from what I'm aware of, for, for Rocket Man, was Elton John's journey to actually find himself and fall in love again with himself. 
because everything he did externally was a, a desire to try and fill up and it never worked and that was so clearly presented in the movie and it's a powerful teaching I mean the movie is great it is a celebration of Elton John's journey of his music and the exposi exposition of his own journey through pain and suffering in his life but the teachings in that movie about learning how to love yourself again when you've lost yourself to remember how to fall in love with your inner child and really heal that relationship I think those are for me some of the biggest takeaways from the movie gifts beyond just the music which was amazing gifts beyond understanding the music in context which was another beautiful thing about the movie too but the relationship he had with himself where he came back to himself and really learnt to be free it was a really humane story or really, sorry, really, really human story humane, human, yeah, both and so for me that's why I love the movies already and again it's the next day, I saw it yesterday but I'm already so, so celebrating the movie because I really valued the quality of story they put in the movie telling his story to celebrate and also to share it wasn't easy and that um, hero's journey, so to speak, that retribution, so to speak, something we all have available to us. So yes, you can love yourself, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, you can love yourself. It comes down to choice. Are you willing to learn? Are you willing to love? Are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to grow into a place of loving yourself? If you are, then you're already taking the first step. A couple of things I want to say about that in my work, just so you know where I'm coming from with this. This is the journey I do with my clients a lot because a lot of what I help in relationships, my, sorry, a lot of what I help my clients do to attract relationships starts with loving themselves and all the things that go with that. So if you were, you're ready to go deep with that work, then I'll give you a link in the comments so you can reach out for a discovery session with me so we can talk. I have a few other things I offer in terms of um, downloadable programs, uh, audio courses, other things too, that will help you learn how to love yourself. But what I'm going to put in the little comments is a link to a discovery session with me because frankly, until we talk, I don't know what best to recommend to you. But if you really want to go deeper in this work, I recommend you reach out to me. So I'll put a link in the comments for a complimentary discovery session with me. We can talk and find out where you are, what you're looking for, and how we can help you get there. If it doesn't work out, we don't work together. It's easy. So with that, I thank you for watching. I hope this made some sense to you. This is a powerful piece of the work. It's probably the deepest piece of the work you'll ever get to do, which is learning how to love yourself fully help in a healthy way that's really forgiving and allowing yourself to be free. I can help you with that. Again, link will be in the comments. I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions about this, please put them below. I'll respond when I sign off. Any thoughts, any experiences, any anything you want to share, put it in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off. I thank you for watching. Oh, replays. I need to remember that before you say that before I say that. This is my Facebook live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Please like my page. There's also a YouTube channel called Barry Selby, we can just subscribe to, where there's a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live as well. Okay, link, replays. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. I'll be back in tomorrow at the same time, same channel with some other topic. And I hope this made sense to you. If it helps you, great, let me know. If you have any questions, again, let me know. And the link will be in the comments for sign up for the discovery session. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.